again to M Cubed. I am Brian, the Motley Mix Merchant. Thank you very much for dropping by. Well, how's everybody doing? Just finishing off week two here of social isolation here in Canada. At least I know some parts of the United States are just into their first week, but up here we've been doing it since the middle of March. So it's uh, it's already come up on two weeks, two weeks from a couple days from now since I was laid off from my full-time job and I've been just hanging around the house and staying away from people except for my other half and uh, that's what you have to do these days that's that's the times we're in and I hope everybody is doing well uh, we're doing fine here it's uh, it, it's something we never see thought we'd see in our lifetime but it is here and we have to do our part please regardless of your thoughts on it please stay home and flatten the curve or whatever they're trying to say is the hashtag it's just um, something we have to do if Hopefully in a month and a half or two months, we can look back and say, boy, we overreacted, only such and such number of people died. Well, that's the whole idea. Um, keep that number low and we'll move on from there as a society. So anyhow, in the meantime, still carrying on with the eBay business because my shipping company out of Toronto is considered an essential business and it is allowed to stay open. So I'm still able to ship things to the United States, even though my local shipping company that I just found before Christmas time, it's shut down. Um, only of its own accord because this is our set up in a way to keep the workers away from people dropping things off. There's just a storefront, no back door to drop off packages. So the uh, Chit Chats location that I'm using in Toronto have the, uh, their back warehouse door open. You just pull up, you have to have all your labels pre-applied and paid for and all that kind of stuff. And you just basically throw your boxes inside the door and away you go. That's it. So it's um, it's worked well. I only had to use it once so far, but I'm going to be doing it again tomorrow because I have a couple things to ship. Um, and yeah, the online auctions are slowing down for sure. There's still one that's going on uh, in the local area. Uh, I'm not sure how they're going to do it because all non-essential businesses have been forced to shut down by law now. Um, I'm pretty sure an auction house is not an essential business, but the online auction is still going on so i don't know if they're just allowed to open up to, for pickup once the auction is over or how it's going to work so anyhow i've got a couple things on there that i've got my eye on and bids in and we'll see if i uh, end up with those in a couple of days when the auction ends on sunday night but since i saw you last i'm also very very busy with packing because i have sold a total of 15 items since i saw you a week ago uh, four of those items went to one buyer I had one lady purchase four separate vases from me. Uh, she must have been looking in the store because each one was on a best offer. What we, Apparently what she was doing was um, looking through my store and when she saw one that she liked, she would give me a best offer and usually it was not too bad of an offer. Uh, they were smaller vases and so I just kept accepting her best offers and I bundled up all the uh, vases in one box, unfortunately, because <laughs> She lives on the far west coast, surprise, surprise, Washington State. Um, so all the way here from southern Ontario to the west coast, used up all of the shipping charges for all four of the vases. I wasn't able to refund her any of the difference because we didn't really save any money by bundling the four vases together into one box. And it's it's been crazy. Of those 15 items, take away the four the late, that this one purchaser bought, that's 11 items. Eight of them have gone to either California or Washington State. And... It's just the way it's going with my purchases, I guess. They're really locked away in their houses, and so they're really browsing and buying on eBay. So um, I've had to ship stuff clear across the country. Some of the stuff I've lost a little bit of profit on it because of the distance, um, because you take your chances that sometimes you're not going to have to ship that far. But so far in the last week, everything's gone that far. Uh, so that's okay. Uh, you know, we'll... Uh, We'll, we'll eat a little bit of profit right now in these times so that people get the items. And, um, you know, a, question, a lot of people questioning why some people are still doing the eBay selling and that kind of thing. First of all, I'm not selling anything at all that is considered a necessity. So there's no chance that I'm out there gouging people because I don't sell that kind of stuff. I don't have any of the, those kinds of things for sale. I have my vintage ceramics and porcelains and figurines and all those other kinds of things. But I had saw a really really good uh, YouTube video earlier in the week by Dominic, primetime treasure hunter, and he made a lot of good points about why we should keep on 
keeping on doing this thrifting and eBay selling stuff through these times. And I have to agree with them that people are shut up in their houses. Things are getting tense. You know, some people have anxieties. Uh, it's interesting. Dominic is a, I want to make sure I get it right. I'm pretty sure he's a registered neuropsychologist as well as a thrifter. There's a combination you don't see very often, I'm sure. So he knows this stuff about the psychology of what's going on with people in these times. And his point was that people are shut in. There's nothing much going on. You know, you keep yourself busy as best you can. When they get these packages from us, eBay sellers, it is a little bit of sunshine in their otherwise dreary day, to put it colloquially. Um, you know, people look forward to getting their packages. When they open their packages, they have something to take their mind off of all that is going on and maybe release them from a little bit of that anxiety that they're feeling. And I agree with them completely. I know when I'm expecting something in the mail, a package, and it comes, I feel a sense of happiness. And that's why I think a lot of people are feeling right now when they order things on eBay, especially things for collections and that kind of stuff. It's, it's definitely something that people are looking forward to getting. And so when we can ship things to people still as we can, and they get a good feeling when they get it in the mail, well, then that makes it worthwhile. And that is a perfect reason to keep doing what we're doing. So I'm keeping on and I'm glad I have been because it's been a very busy couple of weeks since I've been out of my own regular full-time job and doing eBay only as far as listing and shipping and selling. Uh, definitely wouldn't consider myself full-time now because I still only have so many items in my store, 340, 335 items now. Uh, but I mean, I've sold this month alone, I think I've sold 36 items. And then last month was 30 something. So I, you know, I'm, I'm listing as much as I can, but I'm selling a lot too. So my store numbers are holding steady in the 330 range. So that's okay. So just wanted to quickly um, drop by today and, and let everybody know how things are going. As you can see, if you were a follower, the beard is gone. It was, yeah, just too scruffy and made me look about 10 years older than I already am. So uh, I decided to get rid of it. And the girlfriend was actually very happy once I got rid of it. So, <laughs> it, you know, it just, it was an experiment and the experiment ended and on we go to being clean cut. Well, it's kind of scruffy today, but clean shaven anyhow, again. Uh, so I just wanted to go through a couple of the items that sold in the past week. I'm not gonna go through all 15. Um, I just showed you there uh, the four that the one purchaser bought from Washington State, but a few other items of note that are off my shelves now, and especially off the shelves behind me. You may have noticed, uh, I don't know if you look that closely at the background, but there used to be on that bookshelf right over my shoulder here, the set of Sir Winston Churchill books about the World War. And I set, I sold my other set. If you remember, I sold a set last summer, then I picked up another set at auction. At Christmas time and now that set sold as well. That one had pretty rough shape um, dust covers, dust jackets, so uh, it sold for a lot less than the other ones did last summer which were in near perfect condition, but still I picked those up for a grand total of probably one dollar for the entire set of six, so selling them for thirty dollars plus the entire cost of shipping which is exactly what was covered in the shipping charge it was a great 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 sale for me and um, Good to see him go off the shelf. A lot, of, a lot of space freed up all of a sudden on the shelf back there. Um, then right after I sold the Sir Winston Churchill books, I only showed this to you about two videos ago. It was the Great Big Beer Stein, the International Brotherhood of Electrical Workers Beer Stein, a commemorative stein from 1991, I think it was. Yeah, 1991, the convention, the 100th anniversary of the IBEW. Well, that sold. For full price, I sold it for $95 with free shipping. It cost me about $20 to ship because I really gave it lots of space in a bigger box with a lot of padding. Um, and it was sold, I think that was sold to California as well. But yeah, it. Uh, I had a feeling it was gonna go fairly quickly because it was the only one available with three sold in the past 90 days, all for the 90 to $110 range. So getting $95 US was perfect. And at the time, the exchange rate was about 40%. So that really is closer to $135 Canadian for me uh, on that beer stein that cost me $8 at the Goodwill the one day when I walked in and it was on the very first shelf right inside the door. And it just called out to me and I took it. And uh, that was a great sale. Great, great sale for that one. Uh, what else have I sold? Let's see. I sold the um, 
Bumblebee plush uh, pet pal that uh, I only have had in the store for probably two weeks, two and a half weeks. Got that at the Goodwill for four dollars and turned it around and sold it for uh, I think it was thirty dollars. I don't have any notes today on the sales because I wasn't going to go through all of them, but uh, I think I got twenty nine, twenty five to twenty nine dollars for that one uh, with free shipping, and it's already. The thing about plushes is they squish down into a small box really, really well, and when they pull them out, they just pop back up to full size. So, no harm, no foul when you squish a nice big plush down into inside a box. And so it was off to a new home, and uh, they're very, very thankful that they got it. I'm just trying to take a look quickly through my notes here, uh, through on my phone. Oh, another thing off of the shelf back here. Now you might not have seen it on this shelf. Oh yeah, no, you could. It was right over there, right there. The hat box, the big gaudy gold paisley print hat slash wig box that i picked up that had the mannequin head in it that i've been using for my hat pictures uh it sold for uh what, time, what did i end up selling that for twenty dollars on a best offer and then another uh ten dollars towards the shipping and uh yeah that that was a that was interesting i i didn't even think about that one when i got it at the auction it was ready to be thrown into the garbage until i looked them up and saw that they were selling for twenty to twenty five dollars for a hat hat slash wig box um so yeah that was a, that was that was fun to see that go and it, again big <laughs> off the shelf that box was a big box but it was only uh cardboard on the inside the box made out of cardboard so it was fairly fairly light and easy to ship so uh but very happy to see that off the shelf and made some room over there for some of the vases that i got uh in my online auction hall from last week so i've cleaned up those vases and i've started listing them I'm about halfway through listing them and uh, getting some traction. So we'll see how they go in the next week or so. One last couple of things to tell you about. I sold the, um, the lithograph Demitas cup. Uh, if you remember a few videos ago, I told you when I, when I got the Demitas haul from my one online auction and I found out that the one was see-through on the bottom, uh, I sold that one. I uh, just sold that uh, yesterday, I do believe, for $19 plus uh, shipping. So. Uh, off it goes to a new home and then I sold some Mikasa plates on a best offer of $24 had those in the store probably for four months now uh, I've still got lots of saucers and teacups and that kind of thing for the same pattern but uh, I was able to sell the plates and uh, it's going off to Staten Island New York so anyhow that's just a few of the items that have sold it's been uh, a really good week and a really busy week um, made the trip to Toronto with five big boxes one of them had four items inside of them um, I was able to ship a little bit through my local shipping company before they shut down last Friday um, it's unfortunate uh, it's costing me a little extra and gas money and wear and tear on my car and it costs me more to use chit chats than it does to get my postage directly through pirate ship and just pay the extra couple of bucks per box at my shipping company in Niagara Falls but you know what you do what you have to do right now in these times I'll take a few dollars less profit to be able to keep making profit and keep being able to do sales um, through this time as long as I can. Chit Chat's staying open. Um, they put out the notification after the government gave out its list of essential services and keeping the mail and parcels going is an essential service because some people rely on that for medicine and, and medical supplies and that kind of thing. So still able to ship my stuff through Chit Chats and that's what I'm doing. It's an hour each way, but you know what? I'll do it for now. Just wanted to show you two things that I've been find that I found as I'm going through my piles here of things and organizing a little bit. Now that I've got lots more room on my shelves, I've been organizing just a little bit. So I have a lot more to do, and I think I'll get at that probably tomorrow. Actually, uh, just wanted to show you a couple things. Let me show you this. If you saw the thumbnail, that's cute. Nice little miniature birdhouse, um, sort of a fake birdhouse because it, the holes are not big enough for an actual bird to fit in or to put much food in. You can probably put food in those though. Uh, but I think this is for display purposes mainly. I haven't even looked these up. But I found one on a shelf that I had pulled out of a box. And then I remembered that there was a box from my first auction back in November of the local auction house in St. Catharines. And I pulled out that box and there was about 15 more of these of various sizes from this small to about that big it's there's there's a bunch of them so I'm gonna go through them and take a look and see how much I might have probably I think if I remember from looking at them way back I'm gonna bundle three or four together or two or three or four together and sell them as bundles uh, and then people can use them as decorations outdoors or whatever but I don't think that's a working 
birdhouse to use as a feeder because the holes are not very deep. You can see it's just a small little dowel cut. So we'll see. I'll, I'll check it out. But uh, I thought that that's cute. And a lot of them are very, very cute. And some of them are very, very well done um, and hand painted. So a bunch of, bunch of birdhouses. I'll be selling some birdhouses here in the next little while. And then I remember this. Got this at the last live auction I went to in Niagara Falls before they stopped doing the live auctions. This is, there's this part here. If you can see the words, oh, it's hard to see the words there. You can sort of see the words. Thunderbird. This is the lens off of a reverse light from a Ford Thunderbird. And in the same plastic bag as the reverse lens was this as I back up to show you. This is a full left turn signal from a Thunderbird. I believe it's a 79 Thunderbird, if my research proves me right as far as the design and the shape. It does have a scratch here in the one corner right there. Uh, it does have a chip out of the side here. But there's two things to do with this. I'm going to, going to list it up as a pair, both the reverse lens and the turn lens. I'm going to list it as a pair. Uh, they are meant to be together. Obviously, they came off the back of the same car. Uh, so either somebody who has a Thunderbird they're restoring, it's not in the best of shape, but if you've got a smashed one, it's in better shape than your smashed one. So you may want to use it for that. Or I think that would make a really, really interesting project for a bar or man cave or she shed or whatever, or a car enthusiast's workshop or whatever. If you could mount those on a piece of wood with a light behind each of them, that would look pretty neat. Um, so I, I, there's probably some handymen out there with a little bit of an artistic flair who may want to grab those and uh, put them together in a little bit of a craft project, make a really, really cool wall hanging for their work area or for their bar area, whatever. So anyhow, but those are cool. Um, those are actually worth a little bit of money uh, when they're new uh, because of the shape they're in and the scratches and stuff. I don't expect they're going to be worth anything more than about... Eh, 30 to 50 dollars total brand new if you had a brand new one that was in great great shape they're worth a hundred dollars so uh, I'm, I'm guessing 30 to 50 once i get them listed for the pair on on ebay but i'll list the part numbers in case somebody's looking specifically for that part number and then i'll also try to sell it in the description as being perfect for a bar or a, a craft project that kind of thing so well i just wanted to drop by and uh let everybody know how things are going. How are you doing so far? Leave a comment below in the comment section. Are you hanging in there? Are you staying busy with your thrifting and your reselling? I mean, I, I shouldn't say that. I know thrifting is done right now. All of the Goodwills and thrift stores are closed pretty much. I know some states are not uh, enforcing closures yet, but I know a lot of companies are closing things down. Uh, so maybe you're lucky and your thrift stores are still open, but with social distancing, I wouldn't risk it anymore. I would just stay home and try some online auctions and maybe a little bit of Facebook Marketplace if there's some drop-off and e-transfers e available. Um, you know what? Just stay away from people. You know, I know we're a social being. Humans are social by nature, but this is this is this is bigger than any one person. And so I'm 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 a big advocate for staying in. I have I have not left this house except to ship something or to grab groceries. That's the only two reasons that I've gone out of this house in the last seven days. And I hope um, it doesn't last too, too long, but guess I have to tell you the story. My, my son works in the uh, hospitality industry in Niagara Falls. He's been laid off. Uh, his entire hotel closed down, unfortunately, because they have a big water park, which is considered a gathering place and more than 50 people in the water park is against the law right now. So they shut down completely. Um, they got a letter in the mail today saying, uh, email, I think it was an email, um, hope everybody's doing well. And they talked about some internal stuff and they said our expected reopening date is May the 13th, May the 13th. That means they're going to be shut down for two months minimum. So I, I don't think, I mean, our initial shutdown here is three weeks for schools and, uh, that was the the word from our head office when it comes to the uh, casino where I work in Niagara Falls. 
but I think it's going to be six to eight weeks before we see things start to really get back to normal. As far as a certain leader of a certain country south of my border who thinks that he's going to get the U.S. economy back up and rolling by Easter, he's crazy. Um, I mean, a lot of people knew that already, but he's crazy. There's no way we're going to get back to normal by Easter. That's only two weeks away. Not happening. Well, with the way the numbers are going all over the world and especially in the United States. We're talking middle of May before things get back to a semblance of order. But in the meantime, we'll just keep on doing what we're doing. So anyhow, ladies and gentlemen, if you uh, want to follow along on this entire journey, please hit the subscribe button down below. Then hit the bell to be notified every time a new episode is uploaded. If you could do me a favor and hit the like button if you liked this video or any of my other videos, if you've ever liked them, hit the like button down below because that does give the video traction. So people searching for reselling and thrifting type of videos see the video in their recommendations so everybody take care please i will keep making videos i'll let you know how things are selling and what i find in my profit piles and that kind of thing so i'll stay in touch i'm not going to disappear while this is going on i have lots more time at home here now so i'll uh, i'll keep on doing what i'm doing here on youtube and uh, other social media outlets and just hope that everybody stays well so take care everybody i will see you again here very soon on another episode of m cubed Bye for now. Cheers.